Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're going to look at case number three. We still have the Atwood machine, but in this case the pulley both has mass and it also has friction. And again, we know that tension one cannot equal tension two. If it either has mass or it has friction, the answer is tension one cannot equal tension two. We also have to take into account the moment of inertia. And at this point, you may not know yet what that is, but that's okay. We'll show you a general approach on how to use it. For a solid disk, assuming that the, the uh, pulley is a solid disk, the moment of inertia, which is indicated by the letter I, is one half the mass of the pulley times the radius squared. Just need to know that at this point, even if you don't know yet for sure what the moment of inertia is. We can still find tension 1 and tension 2 in the very same way as before, assuming that M1 is large enough to overcome the weight of M2 and to overcome the friction force, we can then say that, M, that uh, tension, tension 2 can be found by taking the weight of M2G, the weight of M2, I should say, and add to that the force required to accelerate M2 in an upward direction. We can also find T1 by saying it's equal to M1G minus the force required to accelerate M1 in a downward direction. So that will be the same for all three cases. But now we need to find the acceleration due to gravity. It all comes down to, oop, and this should be an A, not G. It all comes down to finding out what A is equal to in order to find T1 and T2. And remember, they're not equal. If you find one of them, that means you still have to calculate the other one. You cannot just assume they're both the same. Normally, we use this equation, F net is equal to the total mass times acceleration. But in this case, we can't use that equation we have to use the rotational equivalent which tells us that the torque is equal to the moment of inertia of the pulley times the angular acceleration. The relationship between A and alpha is that the acceleration, the, the, linear, the, the linear acceleration is equal to the radius times the angular acceleration. So that's the relationship between the linear acceleration and the angular acceleration. We do know the moment of inertia, and the definition of torque is that the torque is equal to the net force times the radius. In this case, if it acts on a pulley, it's a net force times the radius. Let's assume for a moment that it has no friction. We'll make it a little bit easier, and let's say that it has no friction. No friction, so that we take that out of the equation, otherwise we just complicate it a little bit too much. It does have mass, but it has no friction. All right, that makes it easier. Now, how do we find that equation? Well, the torque will be the net force times the radius, and the net force will be the net force caused by the difference of these two forces. So here we can say it's F net times the radius of the pulley equals the moment of inertia of the pulley, which is 1 half mR squared, times the angular acceleration, which is A divided by R. So if we solve for alpha, we get A divided by R. And notice that we have an R here and an R here in the denominator. So this can come up here. That makes that R squared. And then R's will cancel out. So this R cancels out one of these R's. And this R cancels out that R right there. That makes it a little bit easier. And the net force here will be equal to the tension over here, which is tension 1 minus tension 2. So tension 1 minus tension 2, that will be the net force acting on the pulley that caused the torque equals 1 half times the mass times the acceleration A. And then tension 1 can be, we can write in there, we have tension 1 is M1G minus M1A. Subtract from that tension 2, which is M2G plus M2A, and that equals 1 half the mass times acceleration, and now notice we have an acceleration here, we have an acceleration there, and we have an acceleration there, which allows us to find the acceleration of the whole system now. Once we have the acceleration, we then plug that back into these two equations, and that's how we find tension 1 and tension 2 in the case of a pulley, where the pulley has mass. So that's why in many of your problems, as you will encounter them, they will tell you that pulley has no mass or that the mass of the pulley is very small that, so you don't have to go to this system uh, or this approach on how to solve the problem. However, as you go further in your book and you finally get to the point where we have things such as moment of inertia and you learn what moment of inertia is, they will put this 
add glute machine back on there and tell you this time that the pulley has mass and if it has mass you can no longer solve it the way you did before using Newton's laws and F equals MA but you now have to use the rotational equivalent that the torque equals I the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration and then you will solve it like this if you get if you get to this point and you want to know how to do that there's plenty of videos in the in the playlist where we talk about the moment of inertia that shows you how to actually work out a complete problem like this here we just wanted to show you that there's different ways in which you can find the tension in the strings but it always comes down to the tension is always equal to m2g plus m2a or m1g minus m1a if you ignore the subscripts the general approach is always mg plus ma or mg minus ma that might be a better way to say it and that's how we do that in the case that the pulley has mass and we have to take into account the moment of inertia